Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Hank Goldberg. We're ready for the division round, Hank. You're, uh, you've had a good season. I've had a good season. We're getting down to it. We've got uh, four big games coming up Saturday and Sunday. I'm excited. Um, yeah, this uh, should be a good weekend. Um, I'll give you a couple of... Last week I told you about how uh, visitors and uh, and uh, underdogs uh, had a chance and uh, the visiting teams did very well. This week uh, it's uh, a little bit of a change from uh, where... Um, by the way, uh, in, in this playoff round, uh, dogs have a little bit of an edge over the last 14 years. According to Gold Sheet, they're 32, 23, and 2. Uh, but if you look at, uh, I'll tell you an interesting stat. No Margins of victory, 14 points or more. 72 teams have won by more than 14 points. Uh, the next closest is one to three points, which is 39. So big numbers shouldn't bother people. You know, the nine and ten point favorites. Uh, uh, and there's a reason for that, and that is because I think, you know, the teams that had the uh, week off are the better teams. And, you know, for example, a uh, six seed has not beaten a one seed in, like, 15 years. So those are, uh, I think, important trends to look at. Home teams uh, are against the spread aren't that big a deal. 90, 81, and 5. Home favorites, not that big a deal. 84, 78, and 5. So, but teams that are favored by 10 to 13 and a half points recently or over the years are 14 and 8. Wow. So the uh, so the nine and ten point uh, if you like those teams shouldn't bother. You. That's good information, Hank. I pr- appreciate that. That's great to uh, put it under our cap and, and. I always look at the gold sheet for those uh, trends that Bruce Marshall, yeah. uh, who you know uh, keeps very good track of. Well, Bruce Bruce does a great job in the gold sheet for I mean. A hundred years has been really a great source of information. We all read I'm it. I'm going to tell him, yeah, you said he's been doing it for a hundred years. <laughs> well, he's probably just as old as I am, so it's probably true. <laughs> uh, well, um, I don't see any, there's no real bad weather um, out there that I see. It's uh, a little windy in Baltimore, but I, I don't see any precipitation. We know it's going to be cold in Green Bay, but they have a heated field, and I don't see any precipitation or wind there. Um, uh, Injury-wise, what do you hear about Fuller for Houston? I have not heard yet. But uh, I'd I'd say uh, 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 he sure went to town with his one healthy receiver last week. Uh, and uh, I was very surprised that uh, they couldn't. They did nothing to, to, to stop him. With his, you know, his one dependable guy. Um, but uh, I think without Fuller, uh, he's hurting. But you know something? I think uh, I, I just don't think that he's. It took him a while to get going. He made some tremendous plays in the and the towards the end of the game. Against Buffalo, Kansas City is a big difference from Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Kansas City is at home. Uh, their defense over the last few games since the bye, uh, they've been giving up only uh, nine points a game. Their defense is playing very well right now. Uh, and, you know, they're favored. There's one of the teams that's favored by nine. Andy Reid is something like 24 and four coming off a bye. Um, he's, he's tough when he's had time to prepare. And uh, Spagnola, the defensive coordinator, has got that team together on defense. Uh, when they played earlier uh, in the year and uh, Houston went in there and beat them, remember, that's when uh, Mahomes had the bad ankle and he couldn't move. 
and uh, I don't think they were 100 percent on on offense. They didn't have a running game then. This is a different story. That's the one uh, the one total that's really shot up. I've seen that 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 go from 49 to 51. Um, been, the rest of the totals have come down quite a bit. Well, a couple points. I mean, the Baltimore total came down like two and a half points. But that's probably well, every under every under came in last week. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> and, it did. But uh, you know, you have to wonder about teams talking about Baltimore. Uh, you know, people are talking about you know the, uh, the the wise guys are talking about what Baltimore is going to do uh, ta- uh, with uh, really three weeks off. Are they going to be rusty? You know, last year, Baltimore lost in the first round uh, to San Diego, or would that they were San Diego. At, well, I guess they were at the Los Angeles then, the Chargers. But they went in there, uh, and uh, what happened was, uh, you know, Baltimore's uh, Lamar Jackson couldn't do anything throwing the ball. And they just, uh, they, they put seven men back in defense, and uh, dared him to pass, and it was so bad that uh, you know people in Baltimore were screaming for Flacco. He was that far off. Whatever they did in the off season, they fixed it. He's got, uh, I think, he hasn't thrown an interception since the fourth week of the season. He's got something like he's on a run of six of uh, sixteen passes with no picks. His numbers. Are incredible right now. Uh, during the last ten wins, they've been winning by an average of sixteen point six points. Uh, they have covered their last ten games. Uh, he's uh, had the greatest dual threat of any quarterback. He's thrown for three thousand one hundred twenty-seven yards and rushed for twelve hundred and six. He's accounted for forty-three touchdowns in fifteen games. There's, I haven't seen a talent like that ever. No team has been able to figure out a way to stop them. Now, Ingram is questionable. Uh, he's got that uh, injury, uh, a calf injury, but Gus Edwards can run. So I'm not that concerned about it. Ingram would be great uh, if they had him, but Edwards is a, is a pretty good guy. They've got depth at that position. And their defense... Uh, since they added the guy in the secondary, is pretty strong. And Tannehill last week had a couple of key passes, but was not all that consistent against New England. And, uh, you know, originally I thought, well, you know, Tennessee's going to run the ball game, uh, run the ball all day like they did last week. But Derrick Henry is probably going to get his yards. And they're going to try to keep the ball away from Baltimore, but Baltimore's offense right now looks unstoppable to me. I mean, this this quarterback is just such an exception that uh, he's well rested, and uh, you know, and Baltimore's defense is good. They've got a great coaching staff, and uh, geez, I, I, you know, I'm looking for a Mahomes. Uh, uh, a Mahomes battle uh, against uh, against him. That's going to be something to look forward to. Oh, that would be a great. That would be a hell of a matchup if if those two match up for the championship of the AFC. Um, yeah, Lamar has had one hell of a season. I mean, the things that he's done this year, absolutely incredible. And hats off to John Harbaugh. He's done a magnificent. He's always been a great coach. But he's done a really super job this year getting that team from where, you know, you mentioned that Charger playoff game last year. Taking them from where they were in that game to where they are today was has been remarkable. He's done a hell of a job. Yeah. Um, Hank, um, Seattle goes to Green Bay. Green Bay's a four-point favorite. I've seen some line movement this morning. The line went down to three and a half, but immediately went back up to four. Um, you got uh, Aaron Rodgers against um, Russell Wilson, two two Super Bowl champions 
They've both won the Super Bowl. Uh, you got a, a, a brand new head coach for Green Bay that's really not been a head coach at this level before. But the injuries that Seattle has had this year been remarkable that they're even at this point in the season. Uh, they, I mean, they've lost all their running backs. Their offensive line's a mess. But it's a good, a good coaching job getting them where they are, and Russell Wilson's been a magician. At times. Uh, at home, he hasn't been so great. He's been better on the road, actually. Last week, uh, he had a he threw for 320 yards against the decimated Philadelphia secondary. I'm not even counting. I'm throwing out last week. They did nothing. They didn't score that many points last week. He had trouble getting him into the end zone. He had one reliable receiver, and that was it. They had no running game whatsoever. I maintain that Seattle is uh, very much overrated. Uh, Russell Wilson has not played all that great over the last month. And I don't agree with you on uh, on Russell Williams' excellence right now. Uh, you know, he made plays last week against a Philadelphia team that had a bunch of minor league players. And Philadelphia came up with a 40-year-old quarterback who almost came back and beat them. They are, they're not healthy on defense. And uh, they, you know, Philadelphia, like I said, uh, they had a bunch of second-rate players, uh, guys you never heard of, who were able to run the ball effectively at, against them. Green Bay has a really good running game right now. Their defense is playing very well. It's very well coached. I think that Seattle's hit the end of the road. Well, I, you know, I, I, I agree with you, except I haven't been all that impressed with Green Bay this year. I do agree. Seattle has been doing a, mirrors. Uh, so it, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying they're good enough to go anywhere, but what, what do you think about Green Bay? I mean, they've had some really. I, I, I think, I think they really, uh, took it to Minnesota, beat them pretty, uh, by a couple of scores. And it was their defense that really shut down Minnesota. Uh, I think, uh, offensively, they, uh, are not just, relying on uh, on Rodgers. I think they've got, uh, you know, the, the Packers, uh, by the way, gave their offensive line a chance to rest last week. I, I'm waiting to see if Lindsley and uh, Belaga are going to be able to play. But uh, they've got uh, a very strong running game. Uh, and... Uh, and that's been a big factor. Uh, they uh, they didn't need uh, Rogers to carry them uh, because of their improved defense and Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones has become a top-notch running back, and he's a great receiving threat besides that. And uh, Jones is kind of a key. He scored 19 touchdowns this year. Wow. That's incredible. Hank, uh, last week the biggest shocker of the week was the Vikings going to, down to New Orleans and beating the Saints. That that um, that was really a blow to the Saints. I mean, they've lost three straight years when they had really good teams. But Zimmer did a good job. Uh, Cousins played well. Um, Cook ran well. I mean, they played a good game. Did get to, you know overtime, and they won it in overtime with that long pass to Thielen, putting it on the one yard line. Um, how did they come out of that game? Are they healthy and they're traveling to San Francisco to play the Niners? Jimmy G has never started a playoff game, but they have a hell of a good coach in San Francisco. They got a great defense. They got a great pass rush. Their running game is strong. Uh, what do you think of that game? I think their defense hasn't been so great for the last part of the season. Uh, Minnesota, I think, uh, right now is uh, playing very well. Uh, you know, the Vikings, the Vikings are great at generating turnovers. Uh, and 
and uh, San Francisco is a little shaky when it comes to turning the ball over. Uh, Garoppolo gets a little careless with the ball at times. He's never played a playoff game. This is his first one. Uh, they, San Francisco, in their last 27 times as a favorite, but that's gone back a long way, uh, is like a 33% factor. Uh, Minnesota has a healthy Dalvin Cook. That's huge. Uh, he was great last week. And uh, Cousins, having Thielen back in the lineup, he's got Thielen, he's got Diggs, uh, he's got, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of choices uh, to throw the ball to. And uh, San Francisco, you know, they've... Uh, They've got a really good front seven, and they've been holding teams to fewer than 21 points a game, while San Francisco's defense, uh, except for Green Bay, by the way, uh, San Francisco's defense is 24th in points allowed during the last nine weeks. From weeks 14 through 16, they gave up 35.3 points a game. Holy shit, really? Defense hasn't been right. That's an interesting... They haven't been showing that, that ball-headed guy so much for <laughs> time out. Uh, yeah, that, um, interesting on that total, Hank, that open 45, it's down to 44 across the board. A lot of money came in on the under just now in the last 10, 10 minutes in that game. But, well, Minnesota's, uh, uh, Minnesota's defense has always been highly rated. Uh, and, uh, you know, people have been... Uh, critical of their secondary, but their front seven has been playing very well. And, uh, you know, they had, what, five turnovers? I think they have over, over 30 turnovers on defense this year. They rank very high. I think they rank fourth in the league. And uh, San Francisco has a tendency to cough up the ball. Could be a factor in the game. Uh, the, the, yeah, the weather just popped up also on this. A slight chance of rain during that game. In San Francisco, that probably has something to do with the total being moved down. Um, yep, yeah, you know Minnesota can run the ball. They have two good backs, and um, if Cousins plays the way he did last week, they're a dangerous club. No question. And the 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 young quarterbacks that playing their first game has been a, a good bet against situation. Tannehill did win last week, but he didn't play very well. And we, you know, we, we know that. And uh, Jimmy G hasn't never started a playoff game, um, so that's a, it's an interesting stat there. Uh, a great week ahead of us. Anything else you want to cover in basketball or anything, Hank? Uh, well, uh, there was a great basketball game last night. I had the under uh, in the uh, Texas Tech uh, Baylor game, uh, but I was surprised that Texas Tech got beat at home. Uh, Baylor has a pretty good team, uh, and I think they're, they're ranked in the top 10. Both of those teams were. Um, Duke has an injury, but they've got so much depth on that team. Uh, but they've lost a key guy who's going to be out indefinitely, one of the key, uh, key players. Um, there's some good games today. Uh, Seton Hall, I think, is playing Xavier. Uh, a lot of games today. Uh, there's uh, Auburn. Auburn's playing very well right now. I'll tell you a team uh, that people haven't taken a good look at yet who's playing very well is Arkansas. Very well coached. And uh, they've, been, uh, they've been a good play so far this year. Kansas is playing Iowa State. Uh, a, lot, I, a lot of people think that Kansas is the best team in the Big 12. Uh but they're vulnerable at times. Uh, so, uh, uh, but there's a, they're, they're, there's a lot of good games today. And uh, the schedule is heated up now that you've got the uh, conference play. Big 12 has got a lot of good teams. Yeah, Xavier, do. Seton Hall. Uh, you know, Seton Hall is almost at full strength right now. We talked about them the other day. And, uh, you know, that's about it. But, uh, Oh, I'll tell you another, San Diego State. San Diego State is a very highly ranked team. I think uh, they're a top 10 team, and they've been knocking off everybody. And 
You know, our Las Vegas team here is pretty good right now. Very true. Yeah, San Diego State, Hank, is 15-0. Uh, and 0. They haven't lost a game yet. Uh, yeah, they're one of two undefeated teams, Auburn being the other. Right. All right, Hank. Um, By the way, Kentucky played a heck of a game last night against Georgia. That was a good game. Georgia's good. Yeah, they are. And uh, Kentucky beat them. Uh, they came from behind uh, to win late in the game. They're, they're not. And, you know, it's, uh, as happens with Calipari teams, they get better as the season goes along. Yeah, the guy can coach. <laughs> he does know what he's doing. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah, but, you know, as far as the four games are concerned, you know, you got Houston, the Kansas City, and, um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I think Green Bay Seattle game will be an interesting game. Green Bay, uh, won eight games by, uh, eight games or less. You know, they, every game is close. Yeah, and Seattle's got the same tendency. Yeah. Uh, so they're, it's, yeah, this is going to be a great weekend. It's exciting. We'll talk again on Friday. We'll get closer to the action, probably have a, a few more updates on injuries and stuff. Um, I think, I think the, uh, Houston at Kansas City game, if the weather is good, and especially if Fuller comes back for Houston, that might be a good over bet. And I think that's why the line move has gone from 49 to 51. So that's something else we'll monitor in the next couple of days as well. Thank you, so Hank. Ford is coming back. Ford is coming back for San Francisco. Yeah, that gives that pass rush even more power. They're tough. Yeah. Pat, rushing the passer has been the only the only saving grace I think for Minnesota is they have those two backs that can maybe keep. They use some play action pass and some um, mobility and you know uh, before the the snap that can that can change. But they're going to have to coach well to. Overcome that pass rush. That's that's going to be well, difficult. Well, uh, not just the pass rush, but they're also getting uh, uh, two other defensive starters back: one safety and one linebacker. So San Francisco is going to be at full strength defensively. And like I said, that's the movement that we're seeing in the line that goes to forty-five down to forty-four. So there, people are maybe uh, monitoring exactly what you just said. Defense gets stronger. Running a little bit of rain, that might be an underplay. Um, I don't think it's the rain forecast that's causing the number to go down. It's uh, the announcement that came yesterday that uh, San Francisco's entire defense is healthy. Yeah, you're probably right. All right, Hank, we'll talk again on Friday. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Hank. Bye-bye. All right, Jim. Everybody, uh, go to jimfeist.com for Hank's plays, basketball, football, et cetera, et cetera, and my plays as well. I had a good week last week. I was 5-1 and one with my NFL plays. Uh, college basketball uh, has not been that strong for me so far this year, which is really surprising because it's one of my best sports. But we'll work on that, and we'll get it going in the right direction. jimfeist.com for everything you need to sports betting. Thank you.